first news line Good evening and welcome to tonight's edition of Newsline. I'm Sonali Wanigabadge sitting in for Faraz Shaukat Ali. Our topic tonight focuses on the role and growth of SMEs in Sri Lanka. I'm so pleased to welcome to our studio our guest this evening, Tanya Abesundara. She functions as the president of the Ceylon United Business Alliance. Good evening and welcome to you. Good evening, Sonali. Pleasure to be here. Lovely to have you on board. Um, Tanya, SMEs or small and medium enterprises uh, have been acknowledged to be the backbone of Sri Lankan uh, society and business. Um, they are also some of the worst affected due to the multiple crises that we've had in Sri Lanka since 2019, as a result of which uh, businesses have now got to struggle with um, crippling interest rates, the dollar crisis, raw material issues, uh, the power crisis and the impending electricity hike, among a host of other issues. Um, how has this journey been for SMEs in Sri Lanka? You represent uh, a large uh, group of um, varied organizations, which are SMEs. Speak to us about the current context, according to uh, your uh, experience. Yes, Sonali, uh, thank you. Uh, it's a very uh, uh, interesting and a long question. Uh, if I were to break the question into different segments, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the SMV, what is the SMV? SMV is the country's economical backbone. Uh, it's not only the, the underdeveloped world, but even in the developed world, uh, the SMVs are the in, in, in economy's backbone. So is uh, in Sri Lanka as well, because we contribute 52% of the country's GDP. That's a huge amount, of, uh, huge contribution. And, uh, but it is very sad to say, uh, like every other countries in the world, we are not treated equally. We are not treated uh, as important as we should be. Though we are the country's economical backbone, and uh, we are given the stepmother treatment. For whatever the reason, uh, the Sri Lankan policies are never made for SMBs. Mm -hmm. They are always thought of as secondary. It, I mean, they believe an economy to function, it's the multinational companies that should grow. It's never the case. I believe, Sonali, any world, any part of the world, the Western, the developed world, for them, most important is surviving, survival of the SMVs. Why can't we also have the same belief? Why shouldn't we also be given the same treatment? That is the biggest question we ask the government always. Okay. Uh, you said stepmotherly treatment is being accorded to SMEs. Could you elaborate on this? Uh, I mean, elaborating on the stepmotherly treatment is, it is uh, when uh, the Easter bomb attack attacked, came forward with that, came the corona pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, of course, the entire world was affected. So was Sri Lanka. But uh, at the beginning, yes, they try to accommodate all businesses uh, into a certain leverage and, you know, give sort of breathing space. That was not for the SMVs or for, that was a power in power for all businesses, uh, where the moratorium was extended and little, little things. And the uh, interest uh, of the banking interest came down to a one digit, and those were very good policies taken at mm -hmm. that time to uh, keep the country's economic uh, uh, rotating. But with the, with the certain uh, areas downfalls of uh, the government uh, central bank decisions taken, the previous central bank government decisions along with the previous minister, the finance minister. Suddenly, uh, I mean, we were a country always kept the dollar under control. I mean, we used to keep the dollar into a certain control. So when we uh, decided to let the dollar float uh, uh, about eight months ago, and alongside opening up the black market uh, was the worst thing that could have happened to the country. Along that, the floating dollar uh, was taken over by the black market. 
the money laundering uh, institutes. And we are people who are very much dependent on the foreign currency that comes into the country. We are not an industrial economy. We are an uh, export economy to a certain extent, and we, be we believe in the workforce money that comes into the country. Worker force, I mean, it's about uh, 600 million rupees, uh, the dollars that comes into the country. So our general budget is about, uh, I think, 12 billion. Out of that, uh, there is a certain amount that goes through the exports and then the foreign funding uh, employment money that comes in. So that's how the, the country's economic, the dollar cries. And then when this um, money stops coming into the country, to the banking sector, because of the black market being open, so every money that was coming into the country was kept in offshore accounts through these black market people where they used to give something more than what the bank was offering. So the dollar never came into the banking sector. So we had a huge dollar crisis. Along with calling uh, this, uh, with the new central bank governor coming in and calling the country bankrupt. That was another huge blow we had. When a country is bankrupt, no other country in the world would want to help a bankrupt country. So we had no choice other to go into the IMF. So we are now trapped in a situation. So Tanya, it, it is quite apparent uh, that these short-sighted political decisions have landed us in this massive, irreversible almost crisis. But the government has uh, attempted to uh, make progress in terms of certain measures that it has taken, that it is taking in consultation with uh, stakeholders. Do you uh, do you see these consultations happening with respect to the SME sector? No, Sonali, every decision that's been taken up to now from the government is always, uh, I believe it is uh, not uh, a friendly decision towards the SMEs. It is always decisions to sustain the multinational companies. Now, there were certain restrictions put with HS codes. Now, suddenly with the huge dollar crisis. Now, I represent the government industry where we are 80 percent self-sufficient. This is one of the industries where uh, uh, nearly, uh, I think, two billion dollars uh, is generated within the country's economy. That means two billion dollars going out of the country. Stopped. So that's a lot of money. So this industry was a self-sufficiently, hugely competitive, uh, very standard industry. Now, uh, I mean, made in Sri Lanka, everybody purchases, even you and me and everybody. We don't look for foreign brands anymore to buy uh, to, for our wardrobe. So now this industry was totally stripped off with the restrictions of the HS codes where certain fabric was allowed, but all accessories was uh, banned. So what happens to the garment industry? We are totally depending on raw materials to come out from offshores. We don't manufacture anything in this country enough to sustain our industry. Sure. So we only manufacture a very small amount of uh, goods, mm. even raw materials, accessories, anything. Right. So we need to bring these goods from our outside. So when we don't have the capacity, uh, dollar capacity to bring this into the country, what happens to the industry? So it is being not shut down, it is forcefully shut down. We are being brought to a situation. So what happens is when we had a huge uh, press conference, when we uh, pointed out the mistakes to the government, they suddenly opened the uh, they let us bring raw materials and accessories. Then what happens is SMVs are not geared rich in dollars. We are not geared for dollars because we are 90% of the SMVs are local entities. So we don't have dollars. We have to go into a banking institute to find dollars to open up LC. The bank didn't have money to give us. So if the bank does not, we have rupee, we don't have dollars. Mm. So what is going to happen? We can't bring down raw material. So it became a mafia. It was a love to the big companies, multinational companies who had dollars to bring down. Mm. So then what happened was the accessories to the fabric, everything was controlled by few entities where it was priced at prices where it is not affordable for us. Okay. 
So obviously the consumer market, the prices went sky high. So in in uh, source of this, mm -hmm. it's not only the garment industry, every industry in Sri Lanka was affected the same way. Because SMVs are not dollar rich, they are only rupee. We believe, we are, we are a local entity. Yeah. So we were put to a situation where we can't, uh, we were not allowed to breathe any longer. So what's the present situation with regard to this? Aspect? So the present situation is now, it's where we are drowning. Why I call drowning Sonali with the new taxizations and uh, the moratorium being taken off and the bank interest, what was from one digit to uh, unprecedented a 36 to 38 percent interest component. Mm -hmm. It is not heard of anywhere in the world, uh, Sonali, because if, because we are now this central bank is implementing advanced economical policies. We are advanced economies in the world, but our economy is not an advanced economy. We are not geared for this sort of uh, our economy. This sort we are not geared for this sort of magnitude. We are a very small economy. We hardly have any reserves in our central bank, nothing at all. Mm -hmm. So when we have been put to a situation of this nature, at a rate of 36 to 38 percent interest in a bank, how do you expect any business to sustain themselves? Because our liabilities are sky high. Our loans our, with the moratorium, all the interest that was accumulated and converted to a new loan was given at new interest. Hmm. And we used to run on TODs, sometimes PODs and TODs. Hmm. If it's a, a TOD, it is 38 to 40 percent. Hmm. A temporary overdraft. Te temporary mm. overdraft. And SMVs are people who would take uh, TODs for, to pay their salaries and when they generally get their money back, it would be settled in a mm. month's time. And a, a, a month because it's and a role, a right? It's a rotating yeah. process because we are not, uh, we are, uh, we are not, uh, our equity is uh, not, uh, we are not powerful enough. We don't have a lot of balance as well. But our businesses keep rotating mm. and we sustain the economy. Mm. So we were pushed to a situation we were, we could not breathe no longer. We are now suffocating. We are dying. So Tanya, um, would you say that as one of the solutions you propose, uh, uh, SMEs need a tailor-made solution uh, from banking institutions, for example? With respect to the loans already taken, uh, with respect to uh, settling uh, of loans, and with respect to taking new loans and the interest rates, yes. would you say that would be of a course, solution? Yes. Um, mainly what we are asking the government right now is to, comp I mean, you have to cut down the interest rates. If you do not, we, w I mean, it's not the, in, uh, uh, the companies you are talking, you are not the SMV dying. The banking sector also would collapse, Sonali, because why I say is uh, 60 to 70 percent of the lending through a banking sector is done to the SMVs. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, if you were to calculatively take, because uh, we have more than 150,000 to 200,000 companies in the country, uh, establishments. So, so these are all run through bank loan. There are no SMVs that run out of pure cash other than the micro. So mm. because SMVs are a sector where they host between 50 to 600 employers. So these uh, companies are most of the time, their collateral is their building, their property, their own home, what they are living. It's their collateral to the bank. Sure. So it's, it's like they're sitting on a volcano. Mm. Mm. Anytime it erupts, they would be, you know, burnt. Right. So we are in a position where we need the government to be more human, humanly thinking. It's not only of themselves right. now, all these uh, new taxizations and everything is being implemented to sustain a government, not to sustain the SMVs. Mm. So if the SMVs collapse, the banking sector will collapse along with the government. All right. The country. We are in conversation with Tanya Abe Sundra. We'll be back after this short commercial break. Stay with us. News first. Newsline. Local government election will go ahead as planned. Election Commission tells Supreme Court. 
Public Administration Secretary summoned by the Election Commission. Allegations made against government attempts to delay the election. Shortage of medicine takes its toll. Doctors and staff take to the streets. Pitch ratings downgrades Tentary Lankan Banks, CEB and Lakdanavi Limited. QCSL calls for public views on electricity tariff hike. Remote Ambalavatta village gets a new bridge from Gammadda. News first, Newsline. Welcome back. You're with Newsline. We're in conversation with Tanya Abe Sundaru. She functions as the president of the Ceylon United Business Alliance. Um, Tanya, if we look at the national SME policy framework, um, it says that it stresses on the importance of creating SMEs that are globally competitive, dynamic, innovative, technologically driven, eco-friendly and sustainable. Do you believe that this, uh, the, the qualities in this definition, the, the attributes in this definition have been fulfilled when it comes to Sri Lankan SMEs? Um, Sonali, I believe this is like a fairy tale. You know, when we are children, we tell our, when, uh, when we were kids, we listened fairy, I mean, parents used to tell us lovely fairy tale stories. This is the category it should be. This is where the SMV should be driven and this should be the case of the SMV. But to do so, the government has to make the necessary groundwork. They can set rules, regulations, and they can say this should be the case to be competitive. Yes, that should be the case. But is the government doing their part for us to be into that position? Yes, for us to be globally competitive, the government has to look at us also in the way we, the government is looking at the BOI companies. Do we get anything tax? Uh, uh, benefits? Nothing at all. In fact, we are being squeezed and taxes are being put, taxes upon taxes upon us. We are to a position we are not competitive. Uh, for us, we have been loudly shouting out to say that the country to develop, it has to be an industrial economy, not an export economy and not an import economy. Every world, every country in the world who are developed, it's an industrial economy. When I call it an industrial economy, Sonali, it is what we create within the country that does not have to be all things exported. We have to create an environment where we will have foreigners, uh, business entities would come into the country and buy stuff, taking those into their countries in smaller volume. It is not always an export, but it is an export in another way because what do you buy foreigners so that people will business people will come into the country we will have business zones we will have business markets like everywhere in the world i mean you take bangkok to all these asian countries they have business markets where everywhere in the world they come they purchase things in little volume they're not all exports they are produced to for their local and for the export but they would purchase and that creates a huge uh, dollar uh, coming into the country and by that you will have uh, the hotel the industry will grow up the tourist industry then the then the food in everything is a chain store so you have to look at things in a way where the country could go forward not looking at one thing to say we only need big entities we only need multinational companies to come in we only need even creating a smaller thing into the world market to be competitive where they want to come in and purchase is an export. In your opinion, what measures must be taken uh, by the government to create an enabling environment for SMEs to sustain themselves? Uh, Sonali, the biggest thing the government needs to be transparent and corruption should be eradicated. Transparency is number one for any government, any organization to go forward. Now, we as SMVs are being caught up in a, a, a web where we have nowhere to turn to because there are no national policies. We don't know where to go to. We, there are policies made, made, every government would come into power and have their own policies. But that would be changed by the next regime. So who are we going to turn to? What are we going to turn to? There are certain things 
if there is a national policy, it doesn't matter who comes into power, green, yellow, black, white. It's a policy that would prevail. So then the government, uh, the country who is a business entity who wants to get into business, they know their pathway. Sure. So it is very easy, transparent. The, Sri Lanka has continuously struggled with uh, policy stability with successive governments, for sure. Um, but what are the like looking looking uh, at this in a positive light? How can the government take uh, enabling measures to rectify or do some damage control? It's very easy, Sonali. I mean, at the moment, of course, the government needs to uh, take few measures, uh, like you know, uh, business friendly measures. Uh, what? implementations they have to these are short-term policies the interest components have to come down taxes have to revived and uh, taken into consideration how a business can survive and uh, these uh, and the other thing is all these utility bills that has gone sky high mm -hmm. uh, from electricity to fuel to everything is affecting the consumer market because the market has got so thinned because of the inflation in the country and due to the inflation I always say the country is not still bankrupt though the central bank called the country bankrupt. We are not a bankrupt country, Sonali. If we were a bankrupt country, we, you and I won't be sitting and talking here. Because still I believe we need national policies, policies that would be made by a government where uh, we could uh, go into a business knowingly anything is easy. Now we, any SMV cannot go into a business with a project report. We want to start up a business, end of the day we have to have a immovable property for us to start up a business. We can have any project report made, but the bank will never give us funding. So the government needs to have a SMV banking system where you identify the business and helping the business to go forward without collateral. So then one of the one of the issues that you identify is that banks are reluctant to give loans to SMEs, is it? No, the banks would not give loans to SMEs without collateral. Right. So if there are other countries in the world, you don't need collateral to get a bank loan. If your business report and the project report that you have made and the, uh, is feasible enough, the bank would uh, provide the funding for you to start the business. But here, you can make any project report. End of the day, if SME does not have collateral, they would not have funding. But that is not the case for multinational companies. The government would provide land, the government will provide the loan, where you bring in a foreign investor and you have tax uh, relief for 20, 30 years. What does the SMEs have? We from day one have to pay taxes. We are squeezed and killed by the government who is expecting these policies. I mean, these, all these nonsense what the government has implemented, what you just now read. Where are the world policies? In terms of multi-stakeholder consultations, that need to be had to discuss issues and find solutions uh, which are beneficial to SMEs. Uh, has that happened successfully thus far? Nothing, nothing. I don't think any of the SMV stakeholders I ever bought for a, uh, one of the, any of these uh, uh, meetings, like you know, they would create different, different uh, organizations to say that, you know, we are having discussions to bring about new policies, policy making uh, teams, but we have urged the government whenever you all are making policies, we should be included. Because so are you saying that you don't have a seat at the table? We don't have a seat at the table. We, are, we should be having because we are the backbone of the economy. So any policy should be We They should discuss with the SMEs. We should be brought forward to a table, discuss to find out. These policies are being made with multinational company who does not have the ideology behind how to sustain the country's SME because these are business people. Business people are not entrepreneurs. They do not br create anything from nothing. Mm -hmm. Business people are different. They would take any company over and would have funding and you know they would uh, swallow another company. But we are, we are entrepreneurs. We start something from nothing. In terms of um, accountability, political accountability, and the need to get policymakers involved in these discussions, there are uh, ministers and government departments uh, established and set up and put in place to ensure that SMEs 
um, are and con will continue to be the backbone of society? Yeah, that that is the biggest question mark. We put them there to support the country's economy, hoping they would be there for us. But it is very shameful to say we pay their salaries. They are being upheld by our taxes. Our taxes are being taken. They are being stolen to uphold the white elephant, so-called the government. What are they doing in return for the country? Absolutely nothing. They are enjoying luxurious lives. Their families enjoy the best of best. We put them in there for a five-year job, hoping they would do something back to the country. Instead of they do things for themselves first. Tell me one entity who has come into a position, of the parliament, the 225 people, how they start their political career within the five-year journey, how they become. Where does this money come from? It's a great question for sure. Um, let's talk a bit about uh, the quantity of SMEs that have had to shut down because of the current crisis. Uh, Sonali, we, I think about 20% of the SMEs have shut down. Right. Uh, I think in the second quarter of this year, I believe the MPAs will go up to about 10 to 15 percent that's about about roughly if you were to take about 1.2 trillion rupee in uh, the banks will have to suffer so that means that is the effectability of the SMV. so if with the december season uh, the consumer market becoming so thin the market value has dropped in about 40 percent that's a lot of course, the turnover income has gone up. But though the turnover income has gone up, the, the consumer market has got so thin, if mm -hmm. you have produced 100 pieces, only uh, 40 pieces to 50 has got so, uh, sold. Right. So the balance is there. So what these have been invested for. Mm. So what is going to happen in another three to four months? Okay. So our liabilities stand there. Tanya, the business community is a key stakeholder in resurrecting the economy from where it is now. We have to acknowledge the work that is tirelessly being done by um, various stakeholders such as uh, the economists, the academia, uh, professionals, um, etc. Uh, to ensure that somehow we, we uh, see what's going on. Final minute of this show, I, I'd like to ask you, what steps must the government take? Uh, to be very honest, uh, Sonali, to answer this question, I need a long, lengthy time, but I try my level best to say what, what I'm going to say is very short. Uh, they, are, they are theoretically rich, not practically rich. For me, they, I believe they don't have any experience. Their theoretical experience does not count to be practical experience. They have to just imagine, we have 4.5 million workforce in this country. A million goes out of work. A million. Forget about the rest. Each household that would earn a wage about 60 to 500,000 would be not there. So these people, how is the government expecting them to support them? Your, po your policies are created for advanced economies. Our central bank is not geared to uphold these policies. Are we rich enough to give a dole like the Western countries if the company collapses? You have to understand when you are taking decisions, don't take decisions with your, I don't know, with your brain. Uh, you, you take decisions thinking it is just, it is implementable. You should be a bit humane as well to understand the policies. Just because you have a pen and a paper in front of you, you don't take stupid decisions like what the uh, immediate central bank is doing. All right. Um, President of the Ceylon United Business Alliance, Tanya Abe Sundara, thanks so much for being a part of Newsline. Thank you for watching us. We'll see you again on Monday. Good night.